Hello everyone, Ictus here, back again with another video. In this video, I will show you guys how to root the client CTF from Z Security. This box is medium rated, and at the time I'm recording this, we only have one winner. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna copy the IP address of the machine, and I'm gonna go to my terminal, and I'm gonna run an Nmap scan. As always, I'm gonna use nmap-sv-a Das SV probes the open ports and Das A enables the OS detection and I'm going to paste down the IP address of the machine. Now let's just wait for this to run. Now as you can see guys the scan is done and we can only see two ports open. We have port 22 for SSH and we also have port 80 for Apache HTTPD. So now we can just go back to the web browser, copy the IP address of the machine once again and paste it on the web browser. We can see that it loads a page and the only interesting thing in this entire page is the login button over here. So let's just click it. And as you can see guys, this redirected us to a login system. Now what I want to do before trying to bypass this login page is run a GoBuster scan on this directory. So let's just do just that. I'm going to run GoBuster dear specify the U parameter and then copy the URL address over here and I'm going to paste it down. I'm going to specify the W parameter for the word list and I'm going to add the word list file path. And now let's run it. Right off the bat we can see that we have images, IMG, admin and CSS. But What's most important over here is the admin page. So let's just go ahead and try to access the admin page. So as you can see guys, we're being redirected to this admin login page. Now let's just try to do a simple SQL injection and see if we can bypass this page. I'm gonna paste down this SQL injection and I'm gonna do the same for the password. So let's see what happens. Now as you can see, we successfully bypassed the login page. We can have a look at everything inside this page. But something that caught my eye is this backup button. Now if I hover over this backup button, we can see on the down left corner that it does a specific request. It requests backup.php, cmd and then it runs a cp command. Now let's try to click this button and see what happens. And we are just being redirected to this home page. It does nothing. Now let's try to manually access the backup.php file and try to run a command. The command I will execute is ping and I'm gonna need to copy my IP address. I'm going to specify the C parameter and I'm going to type 3. Now, what am I doing here? Because when we access the backup.php page, we're being redirected to this home page. We don't know for sure that our commands are being executed. Now, I'm going to run this ping command and I'm going to do three pings to my machine. And then on my machine, I'm just going to listen for incoming ping requests and once I do that, I'll know whether if my commands are being executed or not. Now before sending this request, I need to set up a listener. The command I'll be using is dcp dump. I will write down ip proto icmp and I'm going to listen on the tan0 interface. Now let's just run this and execute the request. Going back, we can see that we got the ping requests. This means that our commands are being executed on the server. Now this is great news so far. This means that we have just discovered a remote code execution vulnerability on this vulnerable web server. Now let's try to gain a reverse shell on this server. I'm gonna locate the PHP reverse shell. I'm gonna copy the file and paste it on my current directory. I'm going to change the name of the file to rev.php 
and let's edit it. I'm going to change the IP address and I'm going to paste down mine. And I'm going to use port 4444. Now let's just exit and save the file. And now I'm going to run the Python simple HTTP server on this directory. Now all we need to do is just w get this rev.php file from my machine and then execute it. I'm going to run the wget command. I'm going to need to specify my IP address once again. I'm also going to need to specify port 8000 because the server is running on port 8000. And I'm also going to specify the rev.php. So I'm just going to forward this and see what happens. As you can see guys, we have a successful GET request, which means that the file was successfully downloaded on the target web server. Now I'm going to open a new tab and start my listener with netcat. And let's access the rev.php file. Going back to the terminal, we can see that we successfully get the reverse cell. So now this is great news so far, we successfully got the reverse cell on the machine. And now all we need to do is just become root to obtain the root flag.txt. Now let's see whether if Python 3 is installed and we can see that Python 3 is indeed installed on the web server. Now what we can do now is run the Python PTY command to spawn a PTY cell. I'm also going to run export term equals xterm and now I'm going to be able to clear my screen. Normally I would run the linpiece tool on this web server to find vulnerabilities, but I think it's better for me to do some stuff manually. So going back to the terminal, we can just check our permissions on the www.user. And I'm going to do that with the sudo l command. And as you can see guys, we can run the bin ash command as the user julian without specifying any password. To do that I need to do sudo u and specify the user julian and then run bin ash. Now if I do id we can see that I am user julian. So we have successfully privilege escalated to user julian. I'm gonna run the python pty cell command again and I'm going to clear my screen. Now the next thing that I want to do manually is check for cron jobs in this machine. Now if you don't know what cron jobs are, they are essentially automated tasks that the administrator of the server can add to automate some tasks. I'm going to cut the etc cron tab and we can see that we have one cron job running every minute by the user root and it runs this compressed.sh file. Now let's just cut this file and see what is happening inside here. And we can see that this script just changes the directory to home julian and then it runs this star command. But what is interesting about this star command is this wildcard expression. So if you're not familiar with this, you can actually exploit this wildcard on the tar command. This process is called wildcard injection and we're going to use this hacking article on the exploiting wildcard for privilege escalation. I'm going to use the commands that this article has. So this command will just create a reverse cell for netcat. I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to paste the command right here and I'm going to keep the port but I will need to edit the IP address and specify my own. I'm going to paste it right here. And all I need to do is just run this. And perfect. Now that it's done, we can just copy this and we are ready to go. I'm also going to start the netcat listener for the port. 
And now let's just copy and paste these commands and I'm going to explain what they do. Before we do that, I actually need to modify this command and I need to paste down this. So I'm going to copy this. And before I paste this command down, I actually need to navigate to the home directory. And we can see right here that we've got Julian. So I need to also change my directory to Julian. Now I'm going to run this command. And what this command essentially did is create a file called cell.sh and it added this text to it, which is the reverse cell. And if I do ls, we can see the cell.sh file in the Julian directory. Now if we go back, we need to run this command as well. And now this first command, as you can see, it says that it shows the progress message every number of records and the default is 10. But the checkpoint action is executing the action on each checkpoint. So what we did here is add one checkpoint and then we also added the action which executes the cell.sh. So now what is happening is that the cron job is going to run and the wildcard will think that these are options added to the command. So we add the checkpoint and then we add what we need to execute. Going back to the listener, we can see that we've got a connection. Now if I do ID, we can see that I am the root user. So I can just go to the root directory and list the contents. And we can see readmin.txt and rootflag.txt. So that was it for this box. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new today. I'll see you guys on the next one.